What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the page. I'm your host, Eric Richardson. Now, look, there's some changes that's going to be made. It's no longer called Overage Overflow. We're moving it all to Money Making Juggernaut. The reason why this page is not only going to be about tax overages, surplus funds, things like that. We're going to teach you a lot of the different ways that you can make money. The Money Making Juggernaut is going to teach you multiple streams. I'm going to start having guests on the show. We're going to be talking about real estate investing. You guys already know that. We're crushing it with Airbnb. We're going to start having some stock market segments. We're going to have Forex, of course, just all type of investing things where you can, we're just going to be talking money. I'm going to be bringing guests on, like I said. So if you want to be featured on the show, let me know and we can move forward with that. Now, this is the last video of 2020. So I'm going to do some reflections. But first, I'm just going to do a quick breakdown on surplus funds, which is the same thing as tax deed over just excess funds things of that nature versus state funds, because there's a difference. And I know a lot of you guys have been confused on that. And I just want to make this video as simple as possible, break down exactly what it is, how we can assess, assist them, the percentages you can charge, the documents that are needed, you know, if you need attorneys, things like that. So let's just go ahead and get straight into it. So surplus funds, and I know last time I did this video, on the board, it wasn't a dry erase that you guys couldn't really see it. Surplus funds is a surplus, which means this is excess funds or an overage from a foreclosure. Now this can be either a tax deed or tax deed sale. Or it can be a mortgage foreclosure. Also, it could also be bankruptcy. Now, you can make money in those ways with mortgage foreclosures and bankruptcies. I don't do those. I stick to tax deed sales. There's also tax lien sales as well, where the owner has time to essentially redeem the property. I don't go after that, I go after tax deed sales. It's the simplest, okay? So this is when a property, so there's a homeowner. They didn't pay the taxes on this home. Let's say the taxes were $3,000 that they didn't pay. So this property, the county, wants their $3,000. This property could be worth, let's just say $100,000 is worth that. They're gonna hold an auction. Now at this auction, the opening bid is gonna be the taxes that's due, so 3,000. Opening bid is gonna be 3,000. Now usually at these tax deed auctions, at these tax deed sales, properties are gonna sell for like 70 to 80% of its assessed value. So let's just say it sells for 80K. So it sells for 80K. That means there's a surplus of 77,000 that is due to the previous owner. The county only wanted their taxes. They got their taxes. Due to state law, any excess funds, any overage, any overbid, remaining profit from the auction is due to the previous owner. So the 77,000 is due to the previous owner. But here's the thing. The counties don't really reach out to them in a way that they can, you know, get these funds. And most of the time they send letters to the last address of record, which was the property that just got foreclosed. So they're never really figuring this out. So what we do is we step in and we see that 77,000 is owed to the previous owner. What we do is we go on the county's website because this is all public information that is on there for free. And I always recommend people to start streamlining it, figure out when they have auctions so you can know exactly, you know, when overbids occur, because you want to be either the first or the second person making calls. So you go to the county's website, you're going to get a list, okay? An excess funds list, a tax deed surplus list. They're going to call it a lot of things. Some counties call it sheriff list. And you'll see who's owed this money. And what you want to do is you want to go to the property appraiser's website. And excuse me, guys, for my terrible handwriting. But the property appraiser's website will, will be able to match up who that previous owner was 
before that foreclosure because you want to verify that that was the previous owner and not the new owner who just purchased the home. So once you do that, you'll also be able to find tax deed documents, things that will support your um, claim. So after we figure out who the previous owner is, we know that they're owed money. What we're going to do is we're going to skip trace. So we're going to skip trace. There's many websites that you use for skip tracing. We're going to skip trace them. We find the owner. After we find out who the owner is, their phone number, we're going to reach out to them. There's many ways to reach out to them. The best way is cold calling. You get them on the phone. You explain them what we do. We don't charge any upfront fees. We handle all attorney fees. We do charge a percentage on the back end, typically 15 to 30 percent. Okay? So I'm not even going to do the math right here. Let's just say um, 10 percent, just to be basic on that. That's 7.7K. That is a fee that you have just made for assisting them with getting their funds. Okay? So this can be very lucrative. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean that this is easy. It is simple. There are simple steps to achieve this. You know, once you file this, there's some paperwork. You're gonna need limited power of attorney, okay? In some states, when you actually have to file a motion, you're gonna need assignment of interest, okay? You're gonna need your agreement contract that's just stating all your um, duties that you're responsible for. And then you're gonna have the um, surplus claim form directly from the county or an affidavit for the surplus funds to be released. Okay, so these are the documents that you're gonna need for surplus funds, for tax deed overages. Now, let's go ahead and get into state funds. Now, state funds, I really like state funds. Now, with state funds, this is gonna be unclaimed property. Okay, so this can either be like leftover bank accounts and you guys will be like, damn, how the hell is somebody going to leave a bank account? Who's going to be doing that? But it's true. There's a lot of money that's left over. People just, you know, things happen. Some people get to the seize. There's money owed to them. They're, they're family members and they're just going to do it. There, it can be like safety deposit boxes. Safety deposit boxes. It can be, you know unclaimed settlements, stuff from um, insurance claims, stuff like that. It's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons why people, you know, just haven't claimed their money. And the money can be, you know, sitting at the state treasury's office for a long time. Now with this, there's each state is going to operate different. Each state is going to have its own laws. Most of the time, these states are gonna have an individual database where you can search. So you, I even recommend you guys go now to your state treasury's website and look up family members. I literally just helped my aunts the other day recover some funds. Um, it wasn't a lot of money, you know, but it's just showing out there that there's people in your family that could be owed this money. So they're gonna have a database where you can search individually. Now, some states, you have to be a private investigator or a licensed finder. Now, don't get afraid. This isn't nothing that is, you know, difficult. Most of the time, it's a simple application. Simple application. And then also, there's going to be some fees associated. So the application fee, you know, it could be anywhere from like $60 to $80. So you got the app fee. Also, you got your fingerprinting for the background check. And most likely, yeah, a money order. You got to send them a money order for the background check. Now, not every state requires this. There's a lot of states that don't require this. But there's another fee associated. You have to get the list from the state treasurer's office. And this can be anywhere from literally free. California is free. It's already online. $5.00 to upwards of $300, like Colorado. Colorado's list is $300 to get it. They don't have any requirements as far as being a PI or a licensed fighter, it just costs 300. So if you actually wanna take this business serious, there's business expenses. A lot of you guys are looking for ways to just hop in into a business for free that's not out there, especially a business as lucrative as this, you're not gonna get that. But this is like, if you think of any other business model, you're gonna have expenses. These expenses are one-time fees and they're not really expensive like that, so you can run a good business. So, okay, you get the list. After you get the list of people who are owed money, 
And it's going to tell you too on the list. It's going to tell you exactly what's owed to them, what institution was, you know, re reported these funds. It's going to tell you who's owed this money. It's going to give you an address, all that. Then you're going to follow similar steps to overages. You're going to skip trace them. You're going to get them on the phone. Or you can send out mailers. Mailers work with state funds because this is money that they will actually remember. With state funds, you can say, hey, did you, you know, have an account with Bank of America back in 19, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, yeah, I did. Well, look, sir, based on, you know, I can't give out the whole cost spread, but they will actually remember this and be more apt to work with you. Opposed to tax overages, surplus funds, this is money that foreign to them. So then you're going to be a little skeptical. You're going to have a little bit more negotiation skills, build um, trust with your clients, stuff like that. But with state funds, you're going to get more conversion, stuff like that. You're going to have faster payouts. And then also some states send your percentage directly to you. Now let's talk about percentages. So some states will charge 10%. Usually that's customary. That's the max that you can charge for state funds, 10%. Some states you can even charge up to 30%. But there's going to be laws, so you need to look into the laws and, and make sure you're doing everything correctly because if you do any type of illegal stuff, you act like you're working for the state, stuff like that, that is a um, misdemeanor and you will get fined. So you, they do not play about that. Also, a lot of you guys might be asking, well, why can't they just do it themselves? Just like surplus funds, yes, they can do it themselves, but they don't know about this money. That's what we're doing. We're stepping in. Asset recovery company. So you step in and you assist them, you know, you charge them 10 to 30%. If the state's um, regulation is to send that money straight to the claimant, that's okay. You know, you have it in your contract, you know, you have, whatever party receives these funds, you have 10 days to issue out the payment or you do treble damage, which just means you can, you know, it's legal, legally binding. This is, you know, this is serious. And most of the time you're helping people out that get their money, they have no problem invoicing you. They're not going to undercut you like that. This is why you build good relationships with people. Now, there's documents for filing this. Now, most of the time with these documents, you're going to have to have your agreement contract. Your agreement contract. And that's just saying all your duties. That's saying where the funds were reported. The amount of this unclaimed property. And then in some states, you have to say in your contract that they are allowed to go after these funds without any fee, any administrative fee. Some states do require that, but that's okay. You know, you do that. Some states might um, require a limited power of attorney. And then of course, everything has to be notarized, but that's pretty much it guys. With state funds, it's going to be a little bit easier on the research because you're going to purchase a list from the state and it's going to have everybody that's do money with tax overages. You can get the list for free. There's also some things that I'm about to come out with my students. There's a new way that we can get lists that's a little bit easier. Um, that's going to help you guys out. But with state funds, you can really make good money while you're waiting on your tax overages to come through. Because you know when you file a motion and right now due to COVID, um, the court cases have been backed up. So while you're waiting on that, you can be knocking out state funds. If you guys want to strictly learn about state funds, I have a mini course on that. It's only $50, made it real affordable for you guys. It's going to pretty much give you like 35 out of the 50 states that I recommend because there's a lot of states like North Carolina, South Carolina. I don't recommend those. They just don't work with finders. Some of them just aren't friendly, but I'll, I'll tell you the states you can go after. I'll give you all the links. I'll give you the documents. I'll give you the cost script. I'll give you the steps. Pretty much everything you need. That's only $50. If you want that, reach out to me. But yeah, guys, that's state funds. We went over surplus funds. Now, huge announcement. Um, this is the next step that I've really been waiting on. And a partner that reached out to me from my course, he's actually getting this thing rolling. We're going to be partnering on this. There's a way that you guys can invest off the tax deed sales. Okay, so we know that there's auctions at these um, tax deed sales and you can get properties for a low price. So what we're gonna start doing is getting these properties at a low price. We're gonna get a hard money lender and we're gonna use the bird method. Okay, you guys know buy, rehab, refinance, repeat. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're definitely gonna be going full speed with that. If you guys wanna join the community, 
you know, just purchase the course, reach out to me. Also, I'll go ahead and explain how the partnership works with tax overages as well, because I'm trying to really have you guys come on the team and we move forward. I've reached out to everybody who got the course. I'm doing my follow-ups, making sure everybody is moving forward because sometimes you can hit a wall and I don't want you guys to hit a wall, especially if you don't, the main thing is research. A lot of research can, you know, drain you, but if you have it organized the way that I teach you, you're gonna be able to smash that. But the partnership is, you're gonna show me basically, you know what to do. You're gonna show me how to find the list, well, how you find the list, I already know how to do it. How you find the list, how you match up the property owner, how you skip trace, um, and then we'll do a mock call and I'll act like I am the previous owner and I'll hit you with rebuttals. And if you do good in the interview, we can bring you on the team. Now, when you're on the team, this is how the partnership works. You're gonna be finding overages, you're gonna be contacting them, you're gonna be getting them to agree to the terms and then I'll step in and I'll handle all the attorney fees, all the documents, stuff like that. You get 40% of the deal, I get 60%. I'm teaching you on the way so that you can venture off and do this on your own help you find your own attorneys, and then we can do that. But we're just gonna build a large team, we're gonna be investing. Big things coming from Money Making Juggernaut, guys. So be on the lookout. I thank you to all the subscribers that came this year. Anybody who's watching and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please check out the Instagram page, Money Making Juggernaut. Big things coming this year, you guys.